Hi guys, hope you are well. My name is Micah and I'm excited to make this video to announce that we'll be starting our intensive revision on the 13th of August. So guys, if you're sitting your exam in November 2023, this video is for yourself. I've had a number of people sign up already and a few other people have messaged me and sent me emails basically asking me for more information and more detail about the course. So I, I thought I would do this video to you know, give you all that information, answer all your questions and leave all that info in one convenient place for you via this video. And so we start on the 13th of August at 5 p.m. Like I said, and we're going to be working incredibly hard. We're going to be working intensively using some of the um, updates from the last exam, some new techniques, new knowledge and our revised and improved course for the November 2023 exam. Okay, so we have two sets of programs. We have the intensive calculations course and we have the intensive combo course. So the intensive combo course is a combination of the intensive calculations plus intensive clinicals as well. So this contains everything we have to offer. So intensive calculations, BNF materials, MEP materials, OTC materials, related topics as well, you know, things like your duty of candle, clinical governance, audits, clinical trials, community pharmacy contracts, Fraser guidelines, all those other extra topics they can ask you about in the exam are all in the combo course. Whereas the intensive calculations course is purely for people who need help with their calculations alone. So that just contains calculations in a new revised way, which we've developed to help you master and smash calculations. All right, so in the intensive calculations course, you have a number of benefits, at least 10 benefits of joining the intensive calculations course. You get a list of all the topics you could be assessed in the exam. And this list is a lot more comprehensive than the one on GPSC website. I've taken my time to make this list and include every single possible topic that could come up in the exam. You know, things like, you know, your crayon, questions they can ask you in the exam, your pharmacokinetics, the different types of pharmaco pharmacokinetics is, is broad. Yeah, but I can explain and break it down and show you examples of different types of pharmacokinetic questions you can be uh, asked in the exam. We have um, health economic questions, of course, different ways they can ask you health economic questions. We have health register questions. We have synchronizing prescriptions. We have BMI. We have BSA, creatinine clearance. We have loads of SPC questions. They're all within the list and within this intensive calculations course as well. We also offer weekly webinars, which are live, so they're not pre-recorded. They are live webinars, so you can join and ask your questions as I teach you through every single one of those topics. So the list of 34 topics will literally go over each of them, one after the other in a live webinar, which is recorded and saved afterwards. So even after the live webinar, you're also able to go back and watch the webinar um, and practice as many times as you want up until the exam. Um, you also be sent the slides uh, from the webinar to keep as well, so they're all yours to keep. Um, and on top of that, you'll be given our workbook. So this is custom design workbooks. I've improved all the workbooks and I've increased the number of workbooks to nine. Right. So previously we had eight workbooks, but now we've gone up to nine workbooks. I've improved the the, the the level or difficulty of the questions, make some of them more challenging, um, but also written out the explanations better in the new workbooks for November 2023 to make it easier for people to understand. Okay, so we've put in a lot more effort to revamp and make this a lot more improved for anyone who's sitting the exam in November 2023. So new questions in the workbook as well have been included and the feedback from the June 2023 exams have been incorporated in this workbook to uh, you know, help you have better outcomes in November. We also have tests included. So we have two mid-revision tests. And um, so after about five weeks or six weeks of revising, we'll do a mid-revision test to assess where you are with your revision. So the mid-revision test sometimes help wake people up. So a lot of people, you know, may be relaxed initially, but when they do this test, they might feel like, 
I need to put in more effort. I need to challenge myself. I need to push myself for that. I don't think I'm doing as well as I should. You know, things like that. So it's really there to help push you, help motivate you. So we have two of those. We have the first mid revision test. We have the second mid revision test as well. We also have our exclusive member group, a new member members group for anyone who is registered on our program. So in this members group, we share information regarding the exam, any tips at all, any information, any form of material that can help you pass the exam, we'll be able to um, share that with you to help you smash the exam in November. We also have smaller groups for past paper revisions. So what we did uh, for the June exam is we split the members on our course into small groups of eight or nine. And for some people, they loved it. And this is optional, by the way, so you don't have to join these smaller groups. But if you wanted to join, you know, small groups to do past papers with people, you can find, you know, other friends or, or, or trainee pharmacists to work with you to help you stay motivated. You can learn things from them. They can learn things from you as well. So we have smaller groups for past paper revision as well. We also have our intensive mock exam. I take pride in our mock exam. Mock exam is one of the most difficult, one of the most challenging, but one of the most relevant, most important, is relevant to the exam. And so if you're able to pass our mock exams, which 80% is our pass mark, by the way. Yeah, so it's not, <laughs> it's not easy, but it's relevant because it will push you to do really, really well at this level so that when you get to the GPC exam, things are going to be a lot easier for you then. So it's been made intentionally to help you excel in the GPSC exam. We have a list of past papers and for every exam, we look, we look at the list of past papers and, you know, pick what's important and take out what's less important to ensure that you're revising with the most relevant, with the most up-to-date resources to enable you pass the exam as well. I'll be sharing loads of hints, loads of tips, you know, last minute, uh, before the exam, we're going to do a last minute session where I'll share a lot of information and advice on how you can navigate the paper, such as, you know, doing the easy questions first, knowing which SPC questions to do first, what sort of SPC questions tend to come up. We can do some of those ones and, you know, hopefully some of those come up and will make things a lot easier for you and help you save time as well. Okay, so that's our intensive calculations course. For the clinical course, guys, I'd like you to know that there's been a number of changes as far as the GPSC exam. A lot of people still haven't clocked this yet. Um, some people may have noticed that in the new GPSC exams, there's been a, a, a lot of focus on application of knowledge. You see, so when I sat my exam years ago, a lot of times you just had to know the basics in some cases, which one of the following is side effect of beta blockers, which one of the following interact with um, metatrexia, that sort of questions. And you just had, you know, option A, B, C, D, E, and you pick one of them. And that's, that's how the exams used to be before. But now there's been a number of changes and those changes, I believe this is my, opinion by the way but i believe they've been made uh intentionally because in two years time we're going to have uh pharmacy students graduating from universities with the ip qualification for example i have a younger sister who's studying pharmacy at the university of reading she she leaves uni hopefully in 2025 and so she'll be one of the first train uh, pharmacy students who'll be leaving uni with the ip qualifications so between now 2023 and 2025 they want this is how i view it they want people trainee pharmacists who are getting on the register to come up to that level in terms of their clinical knowledge in terms of their clinical skills all right so they have to bring you to the same level by assessing you um obviously to try to ascertain if you can um answer questions or deal with scenarios that will require you to apply your knowledge as opposed to just memorize it. So what, what am I saying? So expect to see um, questions around situational judgment in the exam. Expect to see questions around uh, responding to symptoms. So when a patient comes to you and you assess the symptoms they have, you should be able to say, right, this patient needs um, to see their GP or they need to go to A&E or it's self-limiting or they need something over the counter. Okay, so you need to be able to make that judgment. 
when a patient comes to you and in some of the case in some of the scenarios you'll be given in the exam as well you need to have a sound hospital based knowledge so as you know a lot of people who do their training a lot of training pharmacy their training in community pharmacy they tend to um have better knowledge when it comes to you know otc uh, products and things like that whereas people in the hospital tend to have better knowledge when it comes to certain parts of clinical knowledge if you understand what i'm trying to say and so you regardless of wherever you're doing your tra your training whether it's in community or hospital they want you to be sound clinically that's the point they want you to be sound clinically so you need to know your electrolytes probably you need to know your electrolytes inside out what medicines can cause electrolyte imbalance what sort of electrolyte imbalances will they cause what are the symptoms of those electrolyte imbalances and what advice would you give to the patient things like that they want you to know your drug interactions properly okay so like i said when i start the exam they would say uh, which of the following drugs interact with methotrexate and one of the options could be NSAIDs and we know that NSAIDs interact with methotrexate but nowadays that's not how you would expect i mean you can still get that type of question but that's not how you'd expect the question to be phrased so nowadays they can ask you a question saying that a patient is taking methotrexate they're also taking NSAIDs what effect do you think this would have on the patient you see, so you should be able to understand that NSAIDs reduce kidney function. So NSAIDs reduce uh, EGFR. And for that reason, methotrexate won't be excreted out of the body as quickly as it normally would. And for, for, as a result, you have more methotrexate sitting around in the system, which would then increase the risk of methotrexate toxicity and side effects like blood disorders, for example. Do you see what I did there? So it's no longer which one interacts with which. You need to know how it affects your patient. What does it do to your patient? If a patient is taking amlodipine and simvastatin 40 milligrams, for example, what does that mean for our patient? You should be able to say that over 20 milligrams, Amlodipine can increase the levels of symphostatin in the system, which can then lead to muscle breakdown and rhabdomyolysis for our patient. So that, that's what will happen to our patient if a patient takes more than 20 milligrams of symphostatin with amlodipine. Or if they ask you about carbamazepine and warfarin, you should be able to say that carbamazepine will reduce the antiplatelet effect of warfarin. And so what would happen is the INR is going to go down and for our patient, it's going to increase the risk of blood clot formation. Do you see what I'm saying? So that is how they want you to learn your um, clinicals for the exam. You need to be able to apply your knowledge. You need to be able to, you know, explain or choose the options from the options you're given um, as to how it would affect our patient. And in some cases, what advice you'll give to the patient, what counseling you'll give to the patient, things like that. You also need to know your MHRA um, advice as well and when to refer someone to uh, via the yellow card scheme, for example. Those sort of things are now integral parts of the GPSC exam. Um, and loads more as well that I can obviously say uh, all in this video, but I'm going to be incorporating all these things in our combo course okay so guys if you have any questions feel free to uh, message me uh, you can send me a, 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 an email as well or give me a call uh, or you can message me on instagram at london pharmacist network and i will answer any questions or any other questions you have and uh, if you do intend to join us please sign up as quickly as possible on our website and i can't wait to have you all on the course so we can work extremely hard work intensively to smash the exam in november guys I'll see you soon, but till then, all the best.